of God. The children of God are ready to hear what the Lord has bestowed in your heart today, my queen. Please, can you unmute and speak to us? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, my sister. Thank you for that uh, welcome statement. And thank you also for the song that you just sang, which says tears are a language that God understands and truly God understands. And um, I'm so grateful this morning that the Lord has woken us up like our sister who prayed just now. I love Philippians 2 verse 18, which says, it is him who causes us to will and to do according to his good pleasure. If the Lord had not woken us up, no matter how much willing we were to wake up, we would not have woken up. But he has woken us up. He has given us an appetite so that we may come to worship him and to also be comforted, be strengthened by his word. We are living in such perilous times that uh, the world has never seen anything like it. And the Bible, God has prepared, has been preparing his children uh, for a very long time. And we did not quite appreciate the kind of challenges that would be facing the world in this day. But I just want to encourage you, all of you to say, God is not careless with our salvation. And he has prepared each and every one of us to go through the storm. And the storms are going to come in so many different ways, in different magnitudes, at different levels for different people. As I speak right now, I know that there are people who are going through a serious storm and are faced with a challenge that they don't even know what to do or how the Lord is going to carry them through. But believe you me, the Bible is littered with men who went through storms. And we want to look today at their examples and see how we can also draw strength as we go through our individual or even corporate storms. Um, I'm going to read from Philippians chapter 1, verse 29 and 30. Uh, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which he saw in me, and now you hear, uh, you hear to be in me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Kind Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning as we bow before thy throne of grace. We are opening your word. May you open our hearts. May you open the eyes of our understanding so that we may continue to hear you speak to us, comforting us, strengthening us, and helping us to navigate through life, uh, even with all the pain, the challenges that we have. I thank you, Father, and I honor you for this and many other blessings in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There are so many beautiful texts that I would, uh, want to read. There are so many examples in the Bible that I would love to look at. But because of our time, maybe I'm going to pick two or three. There is in the Bible another, because we said life is filled with storms. And there are three things maybe that I would like you to know about storms. Storms are a, a part of life and they're inevitable. Storms will come, whether we know it, whether we like it, whether whatever, but storms are part of life. And what we need to know about storms is that if they are part of life, how ought we to behave before a storm? How ought we to behave during a storm? And how can we behave after a storm? And because we are all at different stages, we are going in this one storm of coronavirus as a country, as a world, as a people, it, as families, whatever, at whatever level, we are going through this storm. But there are some, as I speak right now, who are gathered around a funeral. There are some who are on ventilators. There are some who do not even, who cannot even come to this platform to come and pray or even to listen to words of encouragement. So our storms will come at a time when we do not. So time of peace is time for preparation for war. When we see anyone going through a storm, we need to be reminded that if someone is going through a storm, it means it has done its work with them. And I am also, you know, you are not immune. You are not exempt from these storms. If people are going through it, if you stay long enough in this world, 
you are going to go through a storm, something that will shake you to the very core, something that will make you question even your relationship with God, something that you, you have not even begun to, 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 to imagine. Sister White says, uh, the challenges that are going to face the world in the closing hours of this world are so severe that they are bigger in reality than in anticipation. Most of us uh, be, uh, imagine what it is going to be like towards the end, but we are in it, we are already in it, and we are in it very hard. Yesterday, our presenter told us that the angels are holding the four winds, and very soon, those winds are going to be let, and the, the world is going to face such a time that it has never even imagined. But our assurance comes from the word of God when Jesus then says, do not fear, I have conquered the world. In John chapter 16, verse 33, he says, in the world, you are going to have challenges, but have courage because your peace is in me. So for anyone who's, who has put their trust in God, whether the storms come in whatever magnitude, our safety, our only safety in is his, in his name. That's why he is saying during this time, when we have a little a little uh, time to look for, for, for strengthening, let us seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto us. I'm going to start um, by looking at the storm that faced Abraham. Abraham was a man of God. If you go to the book of uh, Genesis chapter 12, we see Abraham being called. And immediately after he has been called, God promises a, a Abraham that is going to be a big uh, nation. He is going to, his children are going to be like the stars and the sand. And that's a promise that Abraham, you know, with all that, uh, you know, I can imagine that excitement that God was with him. God personally had called him. Abraham started his journey. If you then walk with Abraham, go to chapter 15, there's still no sign of him becoming a great nation. Meet him in chapter 18 of Genesis. Abraham and Sarah are now very old, way beyond childbearing age. But there is something that they did that I would like us to take a lesson from as we go through our personal storms. Because the storms of life are all different. They are not definitely just death, but every other storm that you go through. I would like to invite you to look at the response that Abraham did. In the middle of that storm of childlessness, in the middle of a storm where God personally had promised, Abraham uh, sees three beings and he perceives that these are heavenly beings. Abraham could have gone and said, but where is the promise? You promised that I'm going to be a great nation. And where is, you know, in his household, even dogs were having children. Donkeys were having children. The servants were having children. But nothing was happening in him. Nothing was happening between him and Sarah. And Abraham goes to these men of, uh, to, to these uh, heavenly beings. And he bows down. He offers them water to wash their feet. Not only that, he goes on to even offer them food. I want you to look at this response. If I was Abraham, I would have said, why did you deceive me? Why have you deceived me? Why did you not just say, why did you not tell me all the challenges that I was going to face in between? Abraham believed that God was still God. He would worship him even when his promise had not materialized. Abraham decided to worship, and I'm inviting someone today. I don't know what you are going through, but may you take the attitude of Abraham that God is still God, even though there is no sign of him answering your prayer about your sick relative. Even when God is seemingly has let you down, can you still continue to trust him because he is God? And as Abraham continued to trust, that's why he is the father of faith. God then reveals the type of man that Abraham was. And can I tell you something? When God allows the storms to come into our lives, he handpicks those that he allowed to run that race in that particular 
season. And the season that God has chosen you to go through grief, it is because you know that you are a soldier by excellence. God never gives small, big goals to small soldiers. He knows the type of soldier that you are. You might not realize, but every storm comes to test the strength of a building. Every storm comes to reveal how strong the building is. So the storms that are coming into our lives are coming to reveal exactly what God has already put in store. There is nothing that's going to happen to you that's going to shake you out of Christ if you are deeply rooted. If you are shaken out, you need to check your foundation. Where? Who have you been trusting? There's another person who also went through a storm. We spoke about him last week, and that was Job. Job, after losing everything, it says Job did not sin. He said, Lord, I thank you. Out of my mother's womb, I came naked, and naked will I return. We need also then to realize that at Job, despite having lost everything, the book of Job would not be there if Job had not gone through what he went through. It was not as if God did not know Job. God knew the heart of Job. Job was a, 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 a what do you call it? A teaching aid for us, like the Apostle Paul says, that these things happened to these people as ensembles, but they were written for our admonition on whom the end of time has come. And because the end of time is upon us, we need to be strengthened because we are in it and we are in it very hard. And we need each and every one of us to be strengthened by God, by reading, by looking at how the, the patriarchs went through whatever it is they went through. Job never sinned, even though he had lost everything around him. I'm talking to someone who has lost a husband. I'm talking to someone this morning who has lost a child and a husband. I know of a friend here in Zim who lost a, a, a father and mother, and two weeks later she lost a husband. I'm talking to someone who's going through such difficulty. Just a few days ago, there's someone who lost five members of the same family in an accident. So whatever it is you are going through, the Lord has already deposited whatever God allows, it is his business. But what is ours is our response to what God has allowed in our life. Do you realize that Mrs. Enoch, if we were to take her as well, Mrs. Enoch, I, I don't think, I don't know, you know, I'm not a theologian. But I want to think of Mrs. Enoch and ask myself, God loved Enoch so much that he created a widow in this woman? And how, how did she process it? And this is, these are the stories that we are going to know in heaven. It is God's prerogative. God allowed Mrs. Enoch to walk as a widow because he loved and he had a relationship. Enoch loved the Lord and walked with God until he was taken and left this woman with no answers. There are things that are going to happen in your life that you have no answers, that you don't even know how to handle. But God in his place knows exactly. It, the stories, you know, his hidden wisdom allows each and every one of us to go through things that we can never, ever think of. But he, his hand is right upon us. He does not allow anyone to go through a storm alone. He demonstrated by going through the storms of life. And now he says, it is our time to also go through these storms, but our victory is by depending. When we depend upon his divine wisdom, we are going to march through despite what is going on in our world. I want to talk to someone today. Remember Martha, when she lost her brother, they had sent a word to Jesus to say, the one that you love is sick. And Jesus stayed two more days without responding. When he came, Lazarus was already dead. But remember, the Bible had clearly indicated that Jesus loved Mary and Martha the same way he loves you. By, be, just because Jesus loves us does not exempt us from uh, challenges, from the vicissitudes of life. The, the fact that God loves us, the fact that Jesus loves us, it is the more reason why he allows those that he loves to go through because he knows they are going to be a sermon in shoe. God never intended for sermons to be preached from the pulpit, but that as we live our lives carrying, the way we carry our pain is it must be a sermon to the world and the world must be attracted by the way a Christian carries their grief. The way we wail should be different. That's why Jeremiah says, now teach your daughters how to mourn because the way people listen, you know, a well, 
the way a non-Christian and a Christian should go through challenges must be different. We have a God who is much greater than whatever challenges we have. He is a God who is able to cause peace to be still. He is a God who can even stop this this whole thing in its track, but because he is God, he says, I will carry you through. In the world, you are going to have challenges, but I am carrying you through. I will carry you through and you are going to be victorious. Now, as we go through these situations, Martha goes to Jesus and says, I know you are God, but you are too late. If only you had come when Lazarus was sick, I know you would not have died. They are type, there is a type of a Christian who says, I still believe that, Lord, you are God, but you are late in my situation. Can I tell you something, my dear friend? Jesus is never late. For Jesus, when he came to Lazarus' funeral, he did not come to console them, but he came to resurrect. When Jesus comes into our lives, like he is in our lives, as we know that he is in it, he is with us. There's never a moment that God allows you to go through anything alone. That's why you need to realize that he is God, even when he is four days late, he is still on time and he is coming to make things right. He's going to wipe all tears. He's going to comfort us with a, an eternal comfort. He's going to wipe away all the tears. Whilst we are weeping day in, day out, he has promised that he is going to take care of us. He has promised that it is, it is well that we go through whatever it is, but God is coming and Jesus is coming to take us home to a home where there is no sorrowing, a home where there is no pattern, a home where there is no sickness, a home where there are no, um, um, you know, these uh, situations that we're facing at the moment. May the Lord strengthen you. May he bless you. May he wipe your tears. May he comfort you. May you be assembled. May you be comforted. May you be strengthened in the inner man to know that God has not left you alone because he is an ever-present God. He does not uh, he does not sleep no slumber. He is right there because if God was not with us, we would have perished. The devil would have, would have destroyed all of us. But because the hand of the Lord is upon us, he is making things right. He's keeping us. You know, he, even our sanity would be compromised. But we want to thank God that in this hour, in this very trying hour, we have a powerful God who when he breathes, every creature catches his breath, who when he speaks, a thousand galaxies run into order. So we worship a God who is not careless. He is careful. And as we look at our situations, let's not despair. But let's be encouraged. Let's know that he is a God who is an ever-present God and who makes himself subservient to his word. He has promised that I'll be with you right up to the end of time. And may we believe, and just believing that is an act of faith. May the Lord bless you as we go through, as we go for prayer this morning. May, may our hearts be comforted. May we lift our faith and, and pin it onto him where our help comes from. Um, I'll pray with someone today, uh, someone who's going through a difficult time, someone who's going through a storm. Just know that storms will come and pass, but you must remain in Christ. Never let the storms shake you out of your position with Christ. Never let the love of Christ be diminished by what you are going through. I will pray. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for yet another privilege to bow before the throne of grace. We come just as we are with all the questions, but we thank you that there is no question that we are going to ask that we can never out ask you. You have provided as your word as, as comfort for, when, for the times that we are going through. I, I'd like to thank you for what you promised Abraham. You said, I am your exceeding great reward. When Abraham asked how you were going to make things right, how you were going to help him to become the father of nations. You, you had an answer. You said, dear Lord, 
you are the exceeding great reward. I would like to thank you, Lord, for every one of your children who is going through challenges that are unimaginable, some that we cannot even begin to imagine. But you, your eye ran it to and fro to show yourself strong. And we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are right here with us because you gave us your Holy Spirit, who is our comforter. May you comfort your children. Where we are perplexed, dear Lord, may you give us peace. Where we do not know uh, whatever it is that we're going through, we know that every challenge comes to reveal your presence in our lives. And may your children go through anything knowing that you are a God who is able to deliver. You are a God who is able to save to the uttermost. You are a God of restoration. You are a God who mends broken hearts. You are a God who, 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 who comforts us in ways that we can never imagine. And Father, we want to thank you. May your name be praised. May our lips be filled with your glory. May we glorify you even we, as we are going through situations. I pray all this and many more blessings for your children. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.